Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, we're joined by Dr. Selena Chan. We're going to be speaking about keeping your referral network fresh on the Myopia Podcast. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, we're joined by Dr. Selena Chan, and uh, Dr. Chan practices at Pacific Rims Optometry. It's so awesome to have you on the podcast. How are you today? Hi, David. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so honored to be in the Myopia podcast. Oh. Um, the topic is incredibly important to me because um, our patients need our help, and there are more myopia patients out there than um, that we can manage. And yeah. only 5% of optometrists are focused on myopia management. So yeah, we want to incredible. get the word out. Yeah. And, and, and it just, it, it should tell us a little bit about your practice, where, where you practice and, and how you practice. I see the beautiful treehouse leaves in the background. So I presume that you are affiliated with treehouse eyes. So tell us a little bit about how you got it started in your practice. So I have two uh, private practices in San Francisco and we started my open management a few years ago. And actually we started with my daughter first when my daughter was 10 years old and she, her myopia just kept me progressing. And my husband, I, I always talk about this. My husband is a high myope and has um, developed cataracts in his early 30s. My younger brother had a retinal detachment, also had high myopia. So I didn't want my kids to have that, um, that type of problems when they're older, especially when I'm an optometrist. So at that time, 10 years ago, myopia management wasn't the thing. We thought maybe auto K will work, maybe not. And 10 years later, we definitely know it works. And so my parents have 12 grandkids and 11 of them are on auto care. And mm -hmm. we see the results with them. And then we also see the results from our patients. So that's why I'm so excited to share some of my experiences and uh, have a lot more doctors get involved. It sounds like your practice has really grown in myopia, you know, 10 years ago, what we've known till now. What, what do you think have been some of the keys to your success and in, in how you've got to where you are today? I think the most important thing is change and people see the results in us. So it starts with the results. Over and over, we see the um, patients coming in and uh, my, my, my uh, family, my nieces and nephews, my patients, and we see the results of them coming back a year after year, the myopia was not progressing as much. And this last um, Saturday, I think a lot of us see this, last, uh, the, will we see a patient coming in with no prescription or very low prescription and every year they change. So last Saturday we had a patient, um, nine-year-old Caden, really sweet boy, and he loves to read. In 2018, when he was in fifth grade, he was, I mean, when he was five years old, he was plano, or actually plus a half or plus a quarter. And 2020 uncorrected. The next year, he was minus 150. Next year, increase. And last Saturday, now he's four years later, he's a minus five, nine years old. His axial length was 26.29 millimeters. A normal, I think, average should be. Um, about 23 or so, the axial length. So we decided to talk. We talk to the parents every year whenever we have patients coming in, just like all of us who practice my open management. We tell them, hey, you know, these are the options and why we should be um, treating your kids. And so this year they finally got the point. They, instead of being in denial, just like even my daughter, I was in denial. Mm -hmm. Oh, it wouldn't get worse. It was this watch. And at that point, they can't just sit there and just say, okay, we'll just, it's still changing. The prescription is still changing. The axial length is a lot longer to the point that it becomes a disease in some ways because of the retina is being stretched so much. And he's only nine years old. And we look at 
we started uh, axial length measurement once we joined Treehouse Eyes about a couple of years ago. So we look at his axial length back then to now, it was a big change. So that somehow convinced the parents just looking at the data, having the axial length and the myopia, I, I told them, hey, these are the changes that we have. And, and they, they trusted us because they've been our patients for many years. So they started myopia management. So I think the trust is important. Um, the patients come in, they trust us. The doctors come, uh, refer to us, they trust us. And even the staff trust that this process works. If it doesn't work, they wouldn't, they would tell the patients, oh, you could kind of tell the enthusiasm in the beginning when we first started. The patients yeah. ask them. Because, because they trust, in some ways, they see the opticians more than they see us, the optometrists. We just see them for half an hour, 20 minutes, and they spend hours looking at frames, adjustments, and insurance with the staff. So they talk to the staff. They say, what do you think? Dr. Chan recommended this, my, this auto K for my kids, for myopia management. Is that something I should do? And then so yeah. the, the, the staff knows, they see the results. I always share our happy results with the, the It's uh, so important to include yes. your staff in that whole discussion. You, you also mentioned is your willingness to change and look for and, and see those sort of things uh, as, far as, it, as far as it can. But one of the other things is how do we get the word out there? And I know one of the things you've been able to grow is, is your referral network. And um, tell us a little bit about your history with referring doctors and how you've seen that grow. We started, it's been an exciting year. So with um, COVID, everything else, opportunities come. So it's patients, we all of us see our myopia management uh, patients have grown. And we also see our referrals, internal referrals and outside referrals have grown a lot. We started with less than five, um, five optometrists referring to us in San Francisco. Okay. And now we have about 20 in a wow. year. So that's a big change that that's really exciting for me because before we talk to patient doctors about this and patient doctors, say, well, I don't know how safe it is. Even we still have patients come in and I ask them, how do you hear about us? Said, oh, well, I saw you on TV or I heard about you from my friend or my other parents who told me about you who came over. And I asked, did you, did your optometrist talk to you about uh, my OB management or there are options out there? And they said, hey, yeah. I, I don't because they don't. They think that auto pay is not safe and uh, my OB management doesn't work. Yeah. And so we have, I think that the, the the tie has started slowly changing. Yep. That optometrist knows that there's something they need to do instead of trying to protect our own turf and our own, say, patients. They know that they have to do what's right for the patients. How are they finding out about the uh, practice and that you're doing myopia management? How are these referring doctors finding out more about you? A lot of them, uh, Google on Google, I, I was told in the beginning, and then I did some uh, country education. So, and I think the most important thing was the results. They start, they maybe tested the waters, just like for us. We know a patient asks us about cataract surgeons or LASIK surgeons. We will send them to the surgeon that is, has the best results, the best um, outcome for the patient. So some of those doctors will send the patients to us just as a test in some ways. And then we send, we always send the patients back. We yeah. send them, we let the, when the patients come in we, and the parents come in, we say, hey, you know, Dr. So, Dr. Kading sent you over here. We are uh, only managing your myopia. We are, you're going to go back uh, for the six month follow-up if they want to do co-management with us. If not, then we'll just we'll make sure to send them back for the annual exam with a, yeah. um, a report. We did the consultation report first and then the, the middle of the year in the beginning and then also annual report. So let them know that the, the child, um, their patients are um, safe with us, with what's okay, and the results, they see the results when they go back. So the word spreads out that way. That's yeah, I think that... I think the key part of that is that you're communicating frequently. 
And, uh, you yes. know, many of us might see a letter from somebody that we refer a patient to, and there's that, that one, that one note, but in your case, you're sending two or three notes back to that referring provider. And so they're constantly hearing about you, you know, and if you want somebody to remember you, you need to, you need to be in front of them all the time. And yes. so, you know, if I send a patient to you and then a month later, I send another patient and a month later, now I've sent three patients to you, but it sounds like I've now just received 12 letters from you over the course of the next six months. And it's really hard to forget about you when it comes to myopia management, because I'm just hearing about you. And I think that's an incredible thing that you're doing as part of your process to help those referring doctors who are testing the waters to hear how things are going and not only refractively, but with axial length, because that's not something that maybe they're doing. Right. I think that's a really key part. And I think that's brilliant. Yes. We give them all that information. I think I learned that little trick from a glaucoma specialist in the, in the, in the Bay area, this refer, this new referring Mm -hmm. um, glaucoma specialist would put down everything that she did. So I knew exactly what, what the doctor did and I knew what the results were and the patients yeah. that come back to us every year. So I want to be like that too. So the other doctor knows what's going on with the patient when they send the patients to us and they could trust that we will be taking good care of them and the results are incredible. So instead of having another patient that they see on the, uh, on the schedule, so the, the prescription change or they could see the eyeball growing longer, and they look at this patient that they sent to me, say, hey, there's no change for that patient or very minimal change. And the patients are happy and I didn't lose the patient. I still have the patients coming back to me for I were even. So, and then a lot of the corporate optometrists, that's the bread and butter. I don't want to take away the bread and butter, right? No. So I send them back. I, I would tell the patients and that's, I think that's the important key is to always send the patients back to where the referring doctor is and no, have absolutely. good communication. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is a really key component. Well, I think that's 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 a really, really, really good aspect of what uh, what it is. You mentioned the change that we need to go through, being willing to accept this as a disease, not just a an inconvenience. With you know, the, as you mentioned, your your uh, your parents and having. Uh, having 12 grandchildren, right. 11 of them doing myopia management. What a great testament to how you've become a believer, how you've seen it change so substantially for your patients and how that's just making a huge impact. You personally have this experience with this because of your your husband and, and your own child. So what a great testament. What would your recommendation be to other people who are dabbling, who are thinking to go to the next level? That was a big thing for you. You made that change when you went with Treehouse, right? You decided we're going to go all in. What kind of recommendations would you give for people with that? So a lot of us, when we started myopia management or even auto K, we know it as a very steep learning curve. And the good thing is, Nowadays, everybody talks about, almost everybody talks about myopia management. There are so many good resources out there. Um, So I would say start with three things. Um, I tell all my friends who are interested in myopia management too. And start first with ourselves, our staff, and having a network. So ourselves would be learn as much about myopia management and auto K as much as possible. And the reps out there, my site, Ability, Natural View, they have a lot of marketing material and then the, um, about how to fit the lenses for auto K and how to troubleshoot. So there are actually a lot of helps out there. And another thing I think is important is to know what is the age normal and um, of the kids for the myopia, a certain age, what they should be, what the hyperopia normal should be and what the axial length should be. And right. that's, what we communicate to the parents, um, like, hey, you know, this is like Caden, in Caden's case, we told the parents 26 is pretty high out there. Yeah. And um, most kids and their adult, they're usually under 24 if they're amatropes. That's the expected um, axial length measurement. And um, also, 
Another important thing about a sales prep is know what type of questions the parents might ask and, and some of the answers to. So I think two of the most common questions that usually get asked during the consultation is, auto K, is that safe? What is the safety issue? Yeah. And the second is how long do I, is my child gonna be on myopia management? Is it gonna be forever? Is it gonna be 18, 21? So those are the questions that even if the parents do not address, I usually bring it up. So they, when I tell them that, I say, oh yeah, that makes sense. I was gonna ask that or something in my mind that I would ask. So then yeah. it, it gives us a little bit more credibility because we right. have enough uh, patience, enough experience to know what they have in mind. Um, and the second is staff. Um, I think all the staff um, offices have to buy in into myopia management and um, you train the staff how to talk to the patients and um, the parents too. So we have our dedicated um, dedicated staff who does each part of the myopia uh, management part. So we find our, we look within our own office. So we have someone who's very convincing and credible to be a myopia counselor. So when the okay. patient calls in, um, we would give her the, uh, the phone call so that she could answer all the questions that the parents might have and send all the information to them. And then we have a very good uh, staff who is very patient with auto K training yeah. staff. So kids, sometimes it's really tough to, <laughs> to convince them to put contact lenses on. So he's very patient. So that had helped. Um, another staff where it was very detailed and with all the lens orders and appointments that patients need to come in for. So those, I think is very important um, to come in. And, and I think a story I, I share with my staff too, is that we had a patient came in uh, a couple of weeks ago for eye exam and the child's appointment uh, prescription was increasing. And I told the mom, I think it was from a minus two or minus three and he's what, 16. I told her, her that we have options out there for him. He, his prescription doesn't have to change. It would be great if we could keep it at minus three because his focal point, like this distance, he could see when he's older. If you keep the prescription similar versus a minus 550 like me, I take off my glasses and I have to be up close like this. So there's a functional aspect of that, I told the parents. And then another, the thing is we don't, the parents know that the older son's prescriptions is kept in, progressing. And the mm -hmm. office they went to, the sad thing is, the office they went to before, was, which is really close to us too, also does myopia management and auto okay. Mm -hmm. And one of the doctors apparently doesn't believe in it or doesn't talk to the parents about it. So the, the older son is 20 in college right now and Thank minus you. 850 came coming in. He's like a minus nine, still changing a little. So mom's like, can I do something about him too? And I think we could have done something for the kid a lot earlier. Mm -hmm. um, it's a sad thing if the, the, the doctors are, are working so hard to get, build up the myopia management and the staff or even the associate doctors are not talking to the, par the, the parents and the child about it. There are options out there. So I think start yeah going back, staff buying in, the whole office has to be Involved. They do. The whole so office, awesome. the whole office needs to be really engaged in it, and uh, that helps to continue to push it forward. Not just the, the 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 staff, but the other doctors as the the prime example that you gave. I think there's a there's some really good feedback that you uh, you you put forth with this podcast. I I sure appreciate your perspectives. I uh, my biggest takeaway is how how good I can become with my referring doctors is if I touch base with them more often, I think, and, and, you know, I always am a big fan of this myopia cons, uh, counselor or consultant in the office. Those are always really good points. And those of us who have been doing myopia for a long time, some of us haven't been doing those things. And that's uh, some things that we could really, really grow in. I appreciate your perspective on the podcast. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out with me. Well, thank you for letting me share my idea so we could spread the words out there. Yes, um, absolutely. And I remember when I first started my OB management, the staff would give me the phone call. I would be on the phone with the, the parents answering the questions. And now we train our, 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 our my OB counselor and to train to do contact lens training, to do the lens ordering. So 
I think delegating is important because we're so busy. We are um, having yeah. a delegate, dedicated staff who's good at what they do um, is important. It is. It is. Well, it's awesome. I sure appreciate you joining us. And thank you, the listener, for joining us for this episode of the Myopia Podcast. Make sure to stay tuned next time for other great guests like Dr. Chen. And uh, we'll see you again then. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.